Genesis 3, 15 connected with Genesis 6, 4, women's seed and serpent seed. A lot of people think so. I mean, it's obviously talking about the seed of the woman is the Messiah. So that goes all the way down through Mary. And it's also kind of saying the seed of the woman rather than the seed of the man, Joseph. So that's a hint of a virgin birth too. But yeah, obviously the Messiah, sinless Messiah to be our sacrifice comes through that. So the serpent's seed uh, bites his heel, but he crushes its head. So it's basically a, a prophecy about him overcoming all this stuff. Now, whether we're talking about Nephilim connected or just Satan, we don't know. But since the woman's seed is actually a virgin birth, the serpent's seed kind of sounds like it might be the Antichrist. And some people have said that, you know, maybe the Antichrist is a Nephilim. Uh, either way, I mean, even if the he's just a human being that's possessed by a demonic spirit, that would make him a Nephilim, you know, maybe not physically, but that's what a Nephilim is. So something along those lines. Um, they may be connected. They may not be. I'm not not exactly sure. It's interesting to think about, though, because it's it, it's not just there for poetry. The very, very specific thing that the woman's seed is Messiah, and apparently women don't have seeds, so that would be a virgin birth. So if it's that specific, and then you're talking about the seed of the serpent, that's got to be, again, something very specific.